Walking up to the vehicle, it does have the full proximity key system. And when you walk up to the vehicle with the key, it senses the key, it knows you have it, uh, but it does not turn on any safety lights, any external lights, interior lights, or anything like that. Now, if we hit the unlock button, then we have the lights there in the front that turn on, the tail lights are now on, and the interior lights are on as well. Uh, so this helps out with safety, especially uh, with the exterior lights. When we remote start the vehicle, it flashes the lights and starts up, and we have the headlights to turn on, tail lights to turn on, uh, but there's no side mark, there's no side illumination, so there's no approach light or anything like that to help you approach the vehicle, navigate the ground, and see where you're stepping on. When you turn the headlight switch to the complete off position, you still have the headlights here on. Uh, they're not full brightness, it doesn't look like, uh, and, but the parking lights are not on. There's no tail lights on, no side markers, anything like that. Uh, so you could potentially mistake these as your full headlights and start driving and not realize you don't have any tail lights or anything like that. Now, if you want to turn off all the exterior lights when the vehicle's running, you will have to turn the headlight switch to the off position, then engage the parking brake and then it'll turn off the exterior lights. Turning on the parking lights, uh, now we have these amber lights here in the front. You can see right above the headlights and they're added to these uh, lights here. They're basically like daytime running lights, uh, these LED reflector uh, headlights, because it's not the, f it doesn't look like it's the full brightness of the headlight system. So the amber lights there on the front, and then you have the amber side marker here in the front as well. The tail lights are now on and the tail lights kind of wrap around to the side and then it's kind of bright right in here serving as a side marker and they're red in color the tail lights and it's basically a sharp led line that goes across and around each corner of the rear of the vehicle the tag lights are also quite bright and they illuminate the ground kind of help serve as an approach light i wish they had something on the side though side of the vehicle you see the sharpness of the led lights here The turn signal basically takes that amber light that we saw before and just brightens it up and flashes it. So you can see it's the same light that we saw, it just gives it a much brighter uh, appearance. There's also an amber turn signal indicator here on the side mirror and is visible from the front, the side, and the back. And then the tail light is red in color, so it's a red tail light. Uh, LED and you can see it's just below right on that corner. So you can it's visible from the rear and the side Turning the headlights on so there's the low beam so it's basically the same brightness here for the low beams uh, as we saw before on the headlights so Apparently it is the full low beams this whole time uh, in that reflector LED housing. So you can see it's multi-reflector and they're auto leveling headlights. So it's a multi-reflector LED system. And the cutoff is right about right there. So it's about almost three feet off the ground basically is the cutoff. We're gonna see what it looks like going down the road, but let's, there's the, the high beams here. And when we turn on the high beams, you see there's more reflectors now illuminated. So in this housing, uh, we have that center part as well. So we have additional light, not just refocusing or not just, uh, you know, raising uh, the angle or anything like that. This actually adds light when you turn on the high beams. The cargo area is actually pretty decent because it has these two over the shoulder type lights here and on the other side. Uh, so when you're standing in the middle, you have those kind of illuminating the ground a little bit, just this general area and kind of illuminating in here a little bit. Kind of helps out. Now there's a single light here on the left side. Doesn't do anything to illuminate this area though. Uh, and also um, there's lots of shadows that could be cast by it. So really, you know, obviously it would have been better to have another one here. 
brighter, covers more area. Also, these over-the-shoulder type lights, if they were more more angled in there a little bit better, uh, they're mostly kind of shining on the back of the vehicle and on the ground. So having a little bit more brightness in that direction would help out a lot. Uh, but they're okay. I mean, it's it's good that there's three lights. It, it could be more and more better placement, but it's pretty decent. Now the button to lower the power lift gate is not eliminated and it's right here. The inside of the back door, there's no lights, no puddle lights, no approach lights, anything like that. The pockets are completely dark here in the back. You see all these pockets here, which are completely dark. And then you have some door lock controls and power window controls that are illuminated. Uh, no light in here. So that's all it is, just the backlit buttons on the door. And the third row seat uh, actually is pretty decent. And you can see it's illuminated there in the lap area. And then there's some USB ports that are illuminated. Um, but since we have black interior, it kind of diminishes the light quickly. But you can see it's quite a bit of light there in the center. The second row is similar um, in that the lights kind of shine more on the center area and not so much on the floorboard area. Now it does have backlit USB uh, ports back here, as well as um, the control, climate control and stuff as well. It's all illuminated. And the lights are coming from these little tiny light on either side of the center roof. And same thing with the third row. It's basically one light over each seat. Front door does not have any puddle lights, approach lights or anything like that, but it does have a pocket light here kind of illuminates this little area right there. And the handle right here is just ever so dimly um, illuminated. Then you have the backlit buttons here. This is dark. Floorboard is illuminated and it's a little bit brighter when you have the door open than when you close it. And you have the backlit buttons there. And the lights here in the front are basically the brightest lights, it seems like. And they're coming from the center there. And it shines mostly in the lap area. So I have the interior lights on now. So you can see what it looks like. Let's go ahead and turn those off. And now we're left, kind of fade away. And now we're left with the backlit buttons here. So the, the floorboard is slightly illuminated here on the left side. Not very bright, uh, but it does have some illumination there at the bottom on both both uh, front floorboards. It's hard to tell on the other side because we have black carpet. So uh, without my white shoe there, it's hard to tell. Okay, so the you see the pockets there on the door are illuminated, and then the door pocket door handles you can see those very faint but it's there then you got some backlit buttons on the door steering wheel I like the way they have some color coding uh, buttons here as well to the left the steering column headlight switch dimmer switches there's actually two uh, dimmer switches here so there's one on the left one on the right and we'll go over those in a minute uh, and then the screen or the gauges uh, is right here they look really good And you got a touch screen there in the center with the buttons on top, all backlit. And the climate control buttons. And then right in here, uh, you can see there's USB ports, 12 volt power supply, but there's also a light right in here uh, because there's a wireless charging pad right in here. So if you lay your phone in here, it's gonna be illuminated by this light coming from the front or the back, however you wanna look at it right here. Here's the shifter, it has like a o-ring uh, light in it it's pretty cool and then there is the cup holders and when you put a bottle in there it kind of illuminates the bottle which is kind of neat uh, it illuminates that area now there is a little bit of light right here you see where my hand has a little bit of light if you follow that up all the way up here you'll see that it's actually coming from right up here and they call that like an ambient type light, like just to give you a little bit of kind of moonlight right in this area here, just to kind of help get your bearings and not be too dark. Now you can adjust the brightness using the left dial. So to the left of the steering wheel, there's two dials here. We have a left one and a right one. 
uh, the left one is for that light. So you can see as I go, that's the dimmest it goes, and that's the brightest it goes. So it's not a huge difference, but it does you have the ability to adjust the brightness slightly. And then when it's really dark, you can kind of tell uh, quite a bit of a difference there. Now the other scroll wheel to the right, the right one, uh, is for the gauges, uh, but it also does the screen and other buttons as well. So you can see all these backlit buttons and the screens and everything are adjusted uh, when you scroll that wheel. That's the dimmest you can get, which is pretty dim, almost completely out. And then it scrolls up, but then if you go a little bit higher, it gives the brightest screen level, which is a little bright for my eyes at nighttime. So if you click it down to the first, uh, it'll click down. And this is the, on the scroll part, before you click it up, this is the highest here, which is still pretty good. Um, it's not too dim, not too bright. It's kind of perfect for my eyes. Glove compartment does have a light in it. The center console, uh, the top part doesn't have a light, uh, but the bottom part does. So there's a light coming here from the back and eliminates this area. So if you have things in there, it'll be able to be able to see it. Now the backup camera, even in low light, works pretty good. You can see behind the vehicle, the clarity, the colors, and the resolution is nice, day or night. All right, so up here, uh, in, in addition to that little moonlight, we have backlit buttons for, for tap lights here, for quick reading lights for driver, passenger. And you can see it kind of illuminates there on the seat so it doesn't shine in your face. So it's just in your lap, basically. You can turn on all the interior lights with that button, which is illuminated. That button is illuminated, which is nice. Uh, you can also have them turn on with the door by not pressing this button. If you want that feature off, that's the off button. So that's the off button there for that. So when you open the door, lights won't turn on if you have that off button turned on. And then you have the center of controls here and the ability to open up the power lift gate as well. The visors have bright lights right in my face uh, with the mirror. So a little bit too bright here, I think, as far as the vanity mirror lights. Um, but and they're not adjustable, so no, none of the scroll wheels or anything like that adjust them. Here's what the headlights look like on some trees. And like we've seen before with the new gen Grand Cherokees, there's a little patchiness to the cutoff on the low beams. There's the high beams, there's the low beams. You can see the difference there. Now this vehicle does not have automatic high beams, so you have to manually switch it back and forth. But it does have the auto leveling uh, headlights. So basically they go up and down, uh, not left or right. So as you are, you know, climbing a hill or accelerating fast, they kind of try to keep it from going too high, basically. Um, and that's to, to avoid blinding other drivers. So it's not like it's gonna stay perfectly level at all times, uh, but it tries to compensate to some degree uh, for those different variations. And you can see there is a significant shadow on the oncoming lane, and that's intentional. Uh, most vehicles have like a, a little bit of a spot where oncoming traffic uh, is spared a little bit of light. So that way, a little bit less likely to you know, blind them or whatever, or, or you know, just kind of give them too much light in their eyes. So that cutoff is a little bit lower on that oncoming lane.
Okay, so there is the low beams, and there's the high beams. So the high beams are still shining an additional light close to the vehicle. Uh, I'm not sure why, but because uh, the low beams kind of have that handled. But the high beams, they do give a decent distance, and they do illuminate the road nicely and the side of the roads. Um, but having that additional light very close to the vehicle seems odd. Uh, it just could be that the multi-reflector system, uh, they're trying to overlap, I guess, to a significant degree. Uh, but it's a little patchy, slightly patchy as far as the, the overlaps go. Uh, but I can see it at a, a decent distance. Uh, the distance is good. The amount of light is, is good. Not excellent, but the amount of light is good. I can see fairly well. Uh, and with a vehicle this high, it helps out too because we have the the light. It's able to you know go a pretty far distance without you know things casting shadows and stuff. Um, so yeah, I think this is these are adequate headlights. They're not like spectacular and wowing, uh, like gonna wow you or anything. But they're adequate headlights. Uh, they're LEDs, so they have a, a bright, a, a, a white color to them, as opposed to like yellow from halogen, that kind of thing. But yeah, I think they're, I think they're good headlights overall. 